Hey everybody, Andrew from Pew Brothers. Today we're out here and we've came to the land before, but this is really day one of us making our trek inside of here and getting some access, vehicle access, uh, access more uh, specifically. So uh, we have the, the Forester blade on our uh, weed eater right here. We're gonna try to do some cutting in here today. Um, I have a, bu a bush hog or a rotary cutter, but hopefully we'll be out here soon. Uh, but today it's more or less just about us getting in on uh, being able to, to have access to our land uh, when we want to. So stay tuned, we're gonna go ahead and get started. The first couple moments with this Forester brush blade was a little bit of a learning experience. I hadn't used a brush blade like this or of any kind to be honest, and I found out really quickly that it didn't like weeds or grass, but boy it'll cut anything else. The Forester 9 inch chainsaw brush cutter blade really made light work of this project. I was kind of going in here a little on the back side thinking man I don't have a bush hog or a rotary cutter with me today I'm not going to get much done. That wasn't the case. Not only was this a great tool that cut various sizes of shrubs and brush fairly quickly it stayed consistent with its sharpness it, it just did the job and it did the job well. I thought the reviews on Amazon was just a bunch of hype. It's pretty legit. You can see here this thing is just cutting through everything from pencil to finger thickness and even beyond that two and three four inches. This thing is no joke. quick tip if you decide to pick up the Forester make sure you pick up the blade adapter attachment you're gonna need it I'll put the link for everything down below all right guys so we've only been at this about five minutes this Forester is really making quick work of the vegetation in front of us um, if you were looking at it earlier all this stuff was standing upright whether it be these uh, small saplings or this, this vine that's behind us but uh, we're cutting the road uh, straight through here I thought it was gonna take us a lot longer than what it is we got a bush axe a swing blade and uh, the weed eater over there with that Forester 9 inch on it and uh, as you can see it's making quick work of this I mean we're dragging it off working as a team here and uh, I guess it's maybe maybe 20 yards to the other side of the trail we need to connect these two uh, these two, two trailheads out or these two segments of trail so uh, I'm hoping about about an hour we'll have this stuff not only knocked down but also uh, to the side of the road we'll see you on the next one <laughs> Another one. All right, guys. As you can see, we're making some uh, some progress here. Our um, our clearing has narrowed down a little bit, but a lot of that's due to all these vines, uh, this greenery right here. So you can cut the trees that they're uh, they're you know binding off of, um, but there's still this weight and this support, this this infrastructure here, or this structure, I should say, that's holding all this stuff up. Um, I can't say enough about this Forester. I was kind of skeptical coming out here, but um, as you guys have seen in the clips, um, up into a decent diameter tree, you know, it's it's been doing pretty good work. Uh, not so much on the grassy stuff, but again, that's not, not what it's intended to. It's a, a brush blade by all intents, um, and I've been using it now for about an hour, and it seems to be just as sharp and just as effective as what it was uh, the first tree I went through. Um, we'll probably get some more work done on here later again with a, with a uh with a rotary cutter a bush hog um but this right now is just for us to be able to access the land and, and start our planning process um so right now we know where we need to get to that's as far as what we've got into so uh, we're gonna keep on cutting this and uh whew, hour two three four five maybe left we're gonna get it regardless how long it takes <laughs> Well guys, the guard um, did what it was supposed to do. I'm not quite certain if the tree going over, grabbed the guard and threw it to the blade. 
or whatever the case may be. I kept the guard. I'm just uh, missing my retaining bolt that fell down somewhere over here. So uh, that may be all the action we get for today with the um, with the brush head. Uh, I'm not too crazy about this thing cycling back towards me at, uh, at full revolution. So until we can get this here back on, we're going to call it quits with uh, this old girl. I don't think she'll come off, but I don't feel like spending the weekend in the hospital. While we're out today putting up these no trespassing signs, I like to go with some roofing nails that has a uh, neoprene uh, washer here so it doesn't tear through the signs as the wind comes through or whatever. Uh, not a necessity, but just something I thought that might preserve the, uh, life, the lifespan of uh, my signs a little bit longer. So there I was on my property just putting up no trespassing signs, you know, to keep out trespassers. And then I turned around and met the sweetest little old trespasser lady I'd ever seen. Guys, while, we, uh, while we're out here put up these no trespassing signs, uh, we actually had a, uh, a homeowner from a nearby subdivision that borders our property. And we met, him on the, met her on the trail and we had a little bit of a dialogue going on. Everybody was respectful and everything. But uh, my wife brought up a good point and I thought about putting this into a video a couple weeks back when you purchase land especially land that may have been accessed by other people uh, you may inherit problems or a uh, set of customs that uh, the previous landowner had allowed um, in our particular case this landowner that we purchased it from had owned this particular property for 48 years uh, the young lady that uh, we spoke to uh, just a moment ago said hey i've stayed here for 16 years and he allowed me to do x on this property um, so there's some conversations to be had. My wife said, uh, this is our first interaction and I'm sure there's gonna be more. And I bought 30 of these off of Amazon and I'm about halfway through off of, uh, I don't know, 40 some odd acre property. So uh, the journey begins. Guys, all of our prayers and a lot of her hard work, patience, finally paid off um, my wife and I started looking for this property or this is our property now we started looking for a property to call home four years ago in this area and we've did everything from going out and doing uh, earnest money down perk test on the property there are a lot of properties we were really interested in but for whatever reason those properties continued to fall through and this blessing came to us uh, through a friend in January and last week uh, uh, May 18th uh, we closed on the property and we're so grateful we're grateful to that friend and their family we're grateful to God for just giving us the resources the ability the know-how to make this stuff happen and I'm thankful to you all at Pew Brothers for the network of information you guys have and the things you'll be able to share with us in the future um, we were born and raised in the country but we were never born and raised on 40 acres we had friends and family that had uh, farms and things like that so guys we're here on the ride and I ask you to join us and tips tricks how to's we'd love to hear what you got going on um, this here is still at a loss for words this is as genuine as I can be uh, we just wrapped up our first day of hard work here in um, in the uh, on the property and uh, a lot of Saturdays left to come all right Guys, thanks for watching Pew Brothers. Can you do it, honey? And as always, blink responsibly. <laughs>